Marlin 336, 35 Remington. And if this was a crying baby, I should have taken it out of the theater a long time ago. Hi, George here, and welcome to Tales from Target Suite, where I'll share my perspective on guns and shooting, and we'll spend some time at the range, and every now and then we'll reconvene out in my shop back in Houston, or here at the farm in Louisiana where I'll build some fun projects, and we'll share an adventure or two that'll make even a grown man smile. And yes, today we do have a promise that's been kept, and it is the 35 Remington. I've been talking about this for a long time both in my channel and um, on my videos and also in the comments. And so we finally have one here on Target Suite. And this one belongs to my friend Rusty. And he has loaned me this for, uh, for this video, maybe another one. And I just want to say thanks to Rusty. I appreciate, uh, appreciate that. And, and uh, several of you guys have, uh, have uh, shared things with me um, over the course of this last uh, 16 months of Target Suite. And I appreciate that. And the first bullet I'm going to show you here is the uh, 200 grain FTX bullet. It's the same bullet that that Hornady uses in their Lever Revolution uh, line of, of uh, ammo. And then we have the 200 grain Sierra Pro Hunter 200 grain round nose, a very traditional bullet for the 35 Remington. And then finally, we have the 220 grain SPFN flat nose bullet. It's a spear bullet. 220 grain and just a little more information on that uh, I bought that thinking it was for that I could use it in the 35 Remington but since I've had uh, people tell me that that's actually designed for faster velocities like for the 358 uh, like the uh, 35 uh, Whelan type velocities and so I don't know if that's going to expand or not but at the end of the video like always we're going to bust some pumpkins and water jugs and hopefully we'll capture a bullet and uh, see if it actually expanded or not. And so uh, stick around for that. Also, later on, I'm going to read you a response that I got from the CEO of Term Ruger and Company. And if you remember in last week's video, we talked about Ruger buying Marlin. Well, I got a response back from an email that I sent them. But I'm going to read it to you and let you guys know what, uh, what Ruger's thinking, because they did give us a little bit more information than we had up front. And so we'll, uh, we'll talk about that. And so I said we have three hand loads that we're going to shoot. But also, I've been trying to get my hands on some Underwood Hemo for a long time. It's featured on so many channels on YouTube. And finding Underwood Hemo is like uh, finding hen's teeth and just about as expensive as if you could get them. But lo and behold, I found some. And so we're going to try to include that in today's video. And uh, in fact, here it is. It's a little bit unconventional. But there it is. Underwood Underwood Hamo, and we'll see how that works out. And so I hope you'll stick around to the end of the video to see how the Underwood Hamo performs. Okay, well that's enough yakking. Let's see if we can't shoot some steel now. Okay, I've got six cartridges loaded here. The first two are going to be the FTX, uh, the 200 grain FTX bullets from Hornady, and then the second two are going to be the 200 grain Sierra uh, round nose bullets. And then we're going to shoot one of the 200 grain, uh, 220 grain spear flat point bullets. And then we're going to save the last shot is going to be, uh, is going to be the Underwood Hemo. So let's see if we can make that steel ring.
All right, and here goes the Underwood Hamo. I can't believe, I can't believe I missed that can. But anyway, that was our Underwood Hamo. Now let's go get set up down there and um, shoot some pumpkins and see if we can capture these bullets and see how they expand. Okay, for our first shot, we're gonna use the, first shot on the pumpkin, we're gonna use the, the Hornady FTX bullet, 200 grains. Now, for you guys and girls that think that this test is uh, just an exercise in, in uh, humor, um, let me just tell you that I did, uh, Golly, I did some experimentation with one of the one of the feral hogs that I shot a few weeks ago, and I posted a video for my patrons. And what I did was I set up the the uh, the recently shot the recently um, disposed uh, pig, and I did some penetration test through that animal, and and it was remarkable that. The penetration through the pig captured in water jugs was actually one water jug less than the same bullet shot through a pumpkin, water-filled pumpkin. And so anyway, the point is that it's a fairly reasonable test for penetration. And what I really hope to do, I think we're not going to have any problem catching the FTX bullet and probably the, the um, Sierra 200 grain Pro Hunter. Uh, I think we'll be able to catch those fairly easily. I should be careful when I say things like that with confidence. But uh, but it's really the the spear 220 grain that I'm most interested in to see if it's going to expand at uh, basically 2100 feet per second. And so I hope we're able to catch that bullet and see. But anyway, let's get up back up uh, back up there. We're going to be shooting it from 50 yards, and let's see if we can capture this FTX bullet. First things first. And uh, by the way, don't forget to stick around because we, I am going to read that, uh, that email from the CEO of Sturm Ruger & Company. Okay, here we go. 200 grain FTX bullet traveling at uh, about 1,950 feet per second, something like that. Sure wasn't a dead center hit on the uh, pumpkin. Shot low. Three water jugs. Four water jugs. Okay, that's an interesting bullet. That is really an interesting bullet. Okay, that FTX bullet, I shot a little bit low. Actually, I shot quite a bit low. I don't think I got through any of the water in that pumpkin. Now we're gonna use the 200 grain round nose and I'm gonna to try to do a little bit better job of aiming. That was a good one. Well, that was a really good one, but uh, I didn't get the camera turned on, golly. 
and um, I've got an interesting look. I can see the bullet sitting right there, and so it went through the pumpkin, three water jugs, and stuck right there between the uh, third water jug and the first larger water jug. And it just fell right there. So this is the 200 grain. I'll give you a better close up here in a minute. That's the 200 grain Sierra Pro Hunter. Okay, here's the last bullets, the 220 grain spear soft point flat nose. This is the one that is supposedly too hard for the velocities of the 35 Remington. Okay, we got a lot of drippage going on here, and uh, certainly that's a through shot. Okay, we've got the water, the, uh, the 220 grain bullet is captured in the one, two, three, four, five, sixth water jug. Let's cut this thing open and see what it looks like. Well, I got to tell you, that was a fun video to make, and I really enjoyed shooting that uh, Marlin 336 in 35 Remington. And uh, it sure confirmed my, uh, my long-held belief that the 35 Remington is a great, fun, and uh, capable cartridge. And just to summarize, the FTX bullet, um, gosh, it didn't expand the way I thought it and shed quite a bit of weight. Uh, if it, it lost like um, uh, 80, it was down to 85% of its weight at 170 grains um, and it only expanded to uh, under a half an inch at 0.458. The uh, 220 grain spear bullet did uh, quite a bit better. It expanded to uh, 0.650 and it retained about the same amount, about 84% of its weight, um, but, the, but it really expanded um, significantly. And the 220 grain spear bullet did kind of what we expected it didn't expand that much. It only expanded to uh, 0.5 inches, and um, but it did retain 90, um, 93% of its weight at uh, 205 grains, and so it's definitely a deep penetrator. And you could see that from the uh, penetration of six water jugs as opposed to uh, four water jugs. I believe the other bullets perform, um, penetrated to four water jugs. So I just want to say thanks again to Rusty. Thank you, buddy, for um, loaning me your really nice, uh, it's, it really is a nice sample of a uh, Marlin 336 in 35 Remington. And um, I have really enjoyed shooting it, and I hope to have one of those someday in my own, um, my own gun closet, as they say. But I did promise I was going to read the, the email from, from Chris Killoy of Ruger. He's the uh, president and CEO of Ruger and he responded to an email that I sent through the tell tell the CEO uh, link and that, that I posted in last week's video and here's what he said he said George thanks for reaching out and for your confidence in Ruger 
And then when we get to the end here, it's it's going to kind of sum it's going to kind of answer a lot of guys' questions about what do we think Ruger is going to do with with the Marlin brand. So let me go on reading. It's not very long here. We too are thrilled that the bankruptcy court has approved uh, our bid to purchase the assets of Marlin Firearms. Once the sale is complete, we'll begin the process of relocating the Marlin Firearms assets to existing Ruger manufacturing facilities. Sometime after that, we'll begin setting up production for new Ruger-made Marlin branded firearms, and we ask for your patience and continue, uh, continued support while we work through that process. And then, here's the important part. Our intent is to keep true to the Marlin brand and to ensure its 150-year history and great American-made products live on. Sign up for our email and new newsletter list at ruger.com forward slash Marlin to receive notica notifications along the way. Thanks again for your support. Chris Kiloy, Ruger President and CEO. So I was really encouraged to get that. But anyway, I appreciated uh, getting a response back that at least addressed uh, one of the statements that I made in my email. So I know it wasn't a machine-generated uh, response. And you guys that also reached out to the Tell the CEO website probably got um, probably got a response back. I hope you did. So it's been a fun video. I uh, hope we tied everything together. Uh, if I were to pick a uh, if I were to pick a bullet for the for the uh, 35 Remington, I think I would stay with the traditional 300 grain round nose. I really like the way that Sierra Pro Hunter 300 grain round nose performed. And um, just want to say thanks again for watching. And if you ever wondered how I got water in my pumpkins, well, maybe this will answer the question. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video.